Meg Oliver joins us live now from London. Meg, good afternoon to you. We know the London Bridge train station just reopened today for the commuters and that the bridge is partially reopened. What's the mood like where you are right now? Erica and DeMarco, it's been a somber day here in London as people try to get back to their normal routines. We're just a block from the foot of the London Bridge. As you mentioned, one lane has reopened. They're hoping to open the other one by the end of the day. But take a look at that. There is a steady stream of commuters leaving work on their way home. So life has returned to the bridge. Now over here, this is the monument. And this is where a growing memorial has been building all day long. People have been and leaving bouquet after bouquet of beautiful flowers in honor of the victims. And there are a lot of handwritten notes um, like this one, which reads, you may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. We stand united, not defeated. We are not afraid. We will win. So many inspirational notes and a lot of thank you to the first responders who many are calling heroes today after stopping this deadly rampage in eight minutes. Uh, make a major show of support there. And we're also learning more, slowly learning more about the victims in this tragedy. What can you tell us about them? DeMarco, we're slowly learning the names of the victims, and Sky News is reporting that the second named victim is James McMullen. He's 32 of London, and over the last 24 hours, his sister has been putting messages on Facebook asking for any information on his whereabouts. He was apparently last seen outside of a pub, and now we apparently know his fate. We've also learned some heart-wrenching details about the first victim that was named Christine Archibald. She was hit on the bridge and later died in her fiance's arms. She was only 30 years old. Wow. Um, Meg, what do you know about the latest in the investigation? I, as we understand, the authorities did not raise the terrorism threat level yet? That's right, Erica. The threat level remains at severe, which means another attack is highly likely. After the Manchester attack that killed 22 people, they did raise that terror threat to uh, critical, but that has not changed yet. The prime minister had an emergency security meeting earlier today. She has said that all three attackers have been identified, but they're not releasing their names. And the prime minister went on to say that this is not just an attack against London and the UK, but against all of humanity. But, uh, Meg, before you go, just a quick question. Uh, what's the mood there uh, with the people uh, who call that city home in, in that area and, and, and care so much about that city? Marco, I have talked to so many people today and I've asked them over and over again, how are you feeling? Are you nervous? Are you scared? And, and some of them have said, yes, we're a little nervous and we're looking over our shoulder today. But most of them haven't said that they're scared. It's more a feeling of sadness that they have to go through this grieving process again. As you can see just right over here, there's an increased security presence all over, uh, all over London. And everywhere you go, you see that. And everybody has told me that that is definitely giving them comfort as they're coming to terms with yet another terrorist attack. All right, the third attack in recent months uh, there in the UK. Meg Oliver in London. Meg, thank you.